thanks so much for joining us. I'm Bobby from Bath, Michigan. I run the Rabbitry Center, and today we're going to talk about rabbits, uh, selling certain size rabbits in certain colors so you guys can, can have a, a productive, profitable rabbitry. So, Let's take red rabbits for example. Over the years we've sold several different kinds of rabbits, Angoras, Rexes, New Zealands, Californians, and we, we always come back to our New Zealands because they have, uh, they have always been uh, the kind of like the go-to in this area. There's pet people and then there's, you know, farmers. Some reasons folks would choose small breeds is because they take up less space. They don't need a big 36 by 30 cage like this. Um, you know, they're going to eat less feed and some of them dress out really well. Probably the best would be Florida Whites, um, uh, Dutch, Mini Rex, Mini Laps, Tans, um, uh, up Havana's you know these are these are rabbits that are right around five pounds and you know if you were to process them about 12 weeks they're gonna probably average about three pounds and you know if, if I would really avoid dwarf rabbits dwarf rabbits are um, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that, that love to go squirrel hunting. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, just like the bag limit for squirrels in Michigan, I believe is five. I can't remember, it's been a while, but I mean, in one day you can get that many only because, you know, it's only a couple pounds of meat when you process it. It's a mostly like, you know, you get four chicken wings. But squirrel's pretty tasty if you haven't had it. A squirrel stew, it's, it's delicious. Uh, a small breed rabbit, again, is gonna take a lot less space and eat less. So it's a good economical choice. You know, if you were to choose, you know, giant breeds, and you know, you know we're talking about checkered or Flemish or chinchilla giant rabbits, and these are, uh, I believe the Flemish are 15 pounds on average, checkereds are about 12, chinchillas are about, you know, 13 to 14 pounds. Well, sometimes they get even bigger than that. Well, you'll see 20 pound rabbits, and, and they're very, very big, but they're very docile. So it's, you know, small rabbits and large rabbits make terrific pets, but when you're talking about a giant rabbit breed, you're gonna need a giant cage. They're gonna eat a lot. And plus, when it comes to breeding, you wanna target your does for the right time. Small breeds are right around five months, five pounds. You know, medium breeds, are six months that's the target and why do you wait till that you know giant breeds are seven months so it's going to take longer for to, to get started you know folks often think that they can get bigger litters if they start earlier but the problem with starting earlier it's going to hinder that grow out time also her instincts aren't kicked in you know in in many cases a young new mama will ignore her litter will not feed her litter, will not take very good care, just because her instincts haven't kicked in yet. So that's why it's so important just to be patient and wait. You know, giant rabbits, uh, you know, folks often think, oh, I'm gonna get all this meat. Well, the meat to bone ratio, their bones are bigger. So you're gonna get done processing this rabbit that took longer to grow out, ate more, took up more room, and you're gonna have this big pile of bones. Giant rabbits, they're big sweeties. So. If that's what you want, if you want to raise pets, then I would recommend, you know, maybe looking at small breeds or even giant breeds. Folks often humanize their pets and, you know, what I mean by that is they, they consider their pet a member of the family. And folks, you can raise your rabbits however you want, you know, they're your rabbits. But, you know, it's important to understand these are domesticated rabbits. That means they've been raised in cages for thousands of years. If you read the history, so these rabbits, generation after generation after generation, has been raised in these cages. This is all they know. If these rabbits were to get loose, they'd sit right there. Or, you know, they would basically be easy prey for a raccoon or a hawk or that sort of thing. So we all raise rabbits for different reasons. So, I mean, folks living a self-sustainable life and they don't care about uh, so selling so many rabbits only because maybe they live in a rural area where people don't even drive down the road. People don't want to make it all the way out to, say, you know, uh, Oregon or something like that. If they live in a very small populated area, maybe you're just raising rabbits for meat. Well then it's not going to really matter so much if it's a purebred if you're if you're not selling rabbits but if you want to supplement your feed costs then be sure to to keep things pure it doesn't matter if you're you're raising californians chinchillas new zealands but you want a purebred why because that will actually open up the door for uh, pet sales um, production sales and shows or you know just like i said folks often want to just complement their property and have rabbits running around but when you have a purebred, folks know what they're getting, will appeal to all different levels of, of uh, sales. So how many rabbits do you need if you're gonna sell trios, if you're gonna sell breeding stock? Now breeding stock, you wanna have two rabbits for one male, 
and two rabbits for one female. Now folks often when they're getting started don't know about line breeding. They don't even know what characteristics they should be favoring. And that's, you know, something that they'll learn down the line. Eventually they'll realize, you know, what is a good um, top line? What's a good, um, what are the good, what are the loins supposed to look like? What are the shoulders supposed to look like? You know, it's, it should be a big chunk of meat you know, a good size uh, oval almost. But, and again, we have, we have pictures on our, our mini course even, if you, if you wanted to get like a crash course for a fraction of the price. We also show some diagrams on our mini course, but let's go down and we'll show you four unrelated rabbits. So in this cage, we have two unrelated does, one broken red and one solid red. Right here, we took a younger doe just to make sure that that buck wasn't, or that doe wasn't threatened. And we let her play the hostess, but at the time it was getting colder. I wanted them to be able to have some body heat. And two rabbits in one cage are gonna be just fine until they get older, until they get ready to, to start breeding. Especially when it comes to siblings, two rabbits will do really well in a cage, 30, 30, 36 by 30. These are two unrelated rabbits and that way, um, and, and they're the same sex, that way uh, they don't, we don't have to worry about them breeding. Let's move over to another cage. Let's see. Oh, they're does. These are does. So the rabbit that we put in the cage with this new red was about two weeks younger. We didn't want that rabbit to bully this new rabbit when it you know, enters the rabbitry. We wanted to make sure that uh, it was going to be a good situation, good environment for that rabbit. They had a, a rabbit to cluster with if they got cold. And, you know, it's just the way we like to do things. It's not entirely necessary that you have to do that. You can always stuff some straw in a cage. But here in Michigan, I mean, you can see the snow and the frost on everything. It's pretty cold today. I think it's about 28 degrees. So actually when we're done with this video, we're going to go out. This is the last day that we can deer hunt. We're going to try to harvest uh, one more doe off our property. Hopefully it, everything comes together. Be sure to check out Bobby's Bucks if you're interested in deer hunting. So, but yeah, this, this rabbit's really red and you can see that that rabbit is a little less red. Um, and we're gonna breed, and you can look at this real quick, right over here. This buck is starting to mature sexually. He's right around four months and he's starting to mount that other, that buck. Now he's the, he's considered the dominant and this is considered the submissive buck. They're gonna get along just fine, but um, eventually there's going to be some battling once they get a little bit older because he's going to get tired of that. We will move this this buck out here shortly. So you can see the color difference. One's really rich and this one's a little less red. Um, the bellies are, the, the red goes all the way down to the bottom whereas ours it's starting to look like that agouti where the, with the white belly. So you know that characteristic is something we wanted to get away from. So you'll see that for our reds we have four rabbits. And that will make it so we have an unrelated buck and an unrelated doe. And in event being the offspring uh, has the characteristics we want, we'll even reintroduce to the, to the mom or the father. That way you can predict your results and you can get a higher percentage of, of what you want. So it uh, just depends on how big you want to go. But um, remember, you have to have a grow out cage. These two rabbits can't stay together forever. As soon as they, they breed, uh, they're going to need their own cages. The, the does are going to need their own area for their nesting box and the bucks, are, the bucks are already starting to mature where one buck is gonna give the other buck you know, a, lot of, a lot of guff. In most cases, folks are processing their fryers around 10, 11, 12 weeks. If you have a small breed, you're talking only three pounds, and then the, you know, that rabbit, even after you process it, uh, you know, small breeds actually have a finer bone. Um, not all of them, like say uh, Polish rabbits, you know, these rabbits don't really do very well. Uh, your dwarf rabbits, it's, like I said, it's gonna be like a squirrel. Um, you know, your medium breeds are ideal best case scenario, and and you're probably going to shoot for right around five, six, maybe seven pounds at the biggest. And you know, you're going to walk away with three and a half, four pounds of meat, uh, best case scenario. Giant breeds, and again, you're going to have more bones. So hope this helps you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. I took the last month off because I was battling influenza A. Oh my gosh, that knocked me on my butt. I'm finally getting back into it and feeling a lot better. And this is my first video since I got sick, right around the first week of December. But I'm really happy to be feeling better. And there's just been some horrible bugs going around here in Michigan. If you know how bad influenza A is, um, there's COVID. Influenza B and then influenza A is the the worst. So and I'm talking about it name it. I, I felt it so but uh, Thank you so much for watching 
and we'll see you on the next video.